Hello, and welcome to another episode of Nappy Changing and Brand Building with me, Laura Crawford. And today I am absolutely delighted to be joined by Dr. Tuesday Watts Overall, who is a birth and postpartum coach offering online courses and one-to-one coaching for individuals and new couples preparing for birth and postpartum life. So it's it's brilliant to have you on the show, Dr. Tuesday. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. So am I. I really actually do want to learn a little bit more about what you do and how it can help couples and individuals. Um, but before we kind of get into what you do and what your services are, I'd love to know a little bit more about your story and how you got started. Because you actually started in education and and then made quite a big career shift into to coaching. So I'd love to know what inspired you to make that big change. Yeah, so um, I, for a few years, worked as a lecturer in higher education and my, my subject area was psychology. The two areas are linked to some extent. Obviously, psychology plays a massive part in what I do anyway as a coach, as does teaching. You know, teaching comes into it quite a bit. And teaching was really the part of my job that brought me the most joy. So it kind of made sense that I incorporated that in, you know, the career move. But it wasn't until the birth of my second child, really, that I felt ready to move out of academia and into this birth and postpartum coaching, which I discovered through my own personal experiences around that time, going from one to two children, I kind of discovered this passion I had for helping people navigate those experiences of birth and, you know, early parenthood, that kind of postpartum life with a bit more confidence, self-compassion as well is huge and just a bit more trust in the experience because it was a hugely transitional time for me, like deeply personally as well, going from one to two children, you know, not just practically managing suddenly you're managing two small children um but i felt like a real personal shift from you know the the mum that i was and the person who gave birth that first time around to the person who gave birth the second time around and that mother that i became second time around as well i felt a huge shift and there were parts of my experience that i really I really felt able to lean into and enjoy and I just wanted to help people do the same in their experiences. So that's kind of what prompted the move. And yeah, that really resonates actually. So I, I'm a mother of two as well. And it does it does make a big difference that second time round. A, you feel a bit more confident that you know a bit more about the birthing experience and that those early days, but equally you don't know about this birthing experience or how life is going to be with two small children at home and I think it does make quite a difference whether you have them close together or further apart but um, for everybody it's quite a mental shift that you're you're no longer sort of a just a baby mummy you've got toddlers and children and a second one on the way and yeah it's yeah it is quite a mental shift for you. I found it really huge, like the shift, and from the moment of birth even, because yes, I prepared for birth like first time around, but I'm I'm such a, a logical kind of rational thinker and a scientist by nature and by background. You know, that's the world that I was in, academia. I looked at things very very logically and kind of imagine that I would think my way through uh, and like reason my way through a lot of my experiences and so like birth first time around yes I prepared I read all the books I you know really thought about what my experience was going to be like and you know as a new mom as well I set these like expectations around what kind of mum I was going to be and how I was going to move through that experience. And then I think in doing that, what you do is create a lot of resistance to the experience itself. You, you're still trying to hold on to so much control around those experiences. And I think 
that made my experiences harder than perhaps they needed to be first time around I was still resisting I was still quite anxious really because that's what's underneath all that right it's anxiety it's wanting to control to predict and manage and that's what I was doing first time around and it wasn't really until the second time that I just it was like I breathed a sigh of relief I just let go I just like trusted that you know it was all I was going to be okay you know birth is really normal I kind of just leaned into my experiences a bit more just trusted and had confidence and it just changed the game it just changed the game for me and I think that that's where that passion then kind of like came alive in me I was like that's the key that's the key bit here is like reducing that anxiety building that trust and confidence and just compassion for the person that's going through all of that it's it's huge isn't it it is. It's absolutely huge. And it, it extends all the way into postpartum life. I can certainly remember the first experience of having a young baby and being so anxious about their sleep and their naps and everything they ate and everything I was doing. And I had such high expectations of myself and what kind of mother I was going to be. And then probably by the time the second one came along, I I sort of realigned my expectations a little bit and enjoyed the experience more because I just found pleasure in the days that went well and and when something didn't go so well, I kind of chalked that one up to lesson learned yeah. and moved on. But it was a much better experience. So it, and that extended, I would say, ooh, a good sort of two or three years postpartum, that that sort of mental acceptance of finding the joy in the day there was and not holding on to all those expectations and those anxieties. Yeah, it's easier said it's easier said than done though, isn't it? Because we also like we create these expectations for ourselves and our experiences, but something I realized along the way is a lot of them they didn't start with me. They didn't come from me. It came from like external sources. Obviously, you know, we see birth as this really chaotic kind of medically managed event that we need to like try and control and, you know, manage to a certain extent and also we end up setting these crazy high expectations for ourselves for parenthood and life after birth like we're just supposed to bounce back you know postpartum we're just supposed to be the best mum at all times do all the classes you know make sure everyone's needs are met completely all the time it's just all of these unrealistic kind of expectations get set and that can create a lot of tension in our experiences, um, which is something that I found. And it comes from all sorts of sources, whether it's social media or your own upbringing or parents or friends. It's quite hard to navigate and actually just have your own experience without all of that kind of piling on top. So let me understand a little bit more about what your role as a coach actually entails then and, and on what you offer to people to help them prepare for the birth and then prepare for that postpartum life. So I start working with people in pregnancy and most of the people who come to me are wanting to get ready for birth on some level they you know they feel anxious about it or they just they have no expectation and they just want to know what's kind of in store for them they want to be mentally and practically as prepared as possible which i can totally relate to because that was me um in doing that i you know i educate them around birth so i tell them you know what's actually going to happen during birth i go through the mechanics of birth, what their rights are, but that's that kind of a basic level. I then go beyond beyond that kind of basic birth prep with them into those things we were just talking about. You know, what are your expectations? What do you believe to be true about birth? Where does where has that come from for you? I really dig into, you know, what's their birth blueprint if you like what's the roadmap that they have created because everyone comes with a roadmap that they've created based on whatever they've heard whatever they've seen you know what they understand to be true about the journey ahead but I think it's really important to just as a starting point identify what that is you know what's the roadmap you're working to what are you expecting to happen when it comes to birth what do you want to happen you know how do you want to be supported how do you 
want life to go after birth? Like, how do you see your partner supporting you? How do you see the people around you playing a role? It's just, it's getting quite crystal clear on the expectation there so that, you know, if somewhere along the way, the reality or the experience doesn't quite match there, and that does create some tension, they know how to deal with it and they know how to kind of update or manage expectations, how to be kind to themselves, you know, show themselves a bit more compassion. So that that work begins in pregnancy, but pregnancy itself can be difficult for lots of reasons, for lots of us, you know, it's it can be quite a challenging time. So much is changing and that's been a big topic on my social media recently is that the the changes that pregnancy brings you know not just physically but our brains change our relationships can feel like they're all a bit different in pregnancy and people can find that really challenging so it's sometimes my work is supporting people as they navigate those changes and challenges which you know we're not even at birth yet And then in postpartum life, I just support them as they navigate, you know, another transition and all of the changes that that brings. And, you know, relating back to my previous experience, digging into their expectations, digging into these standards that they're setting for themselves and understanding where there is difficulty or where there is challenge. And sometimes that's individually and like on a personal level. And sometimes that's within a couple, like not communicating effectively what your needs are, what your expectations of the other person are, you know, for life after birth. So it 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 can be a lot. It can be like lots of different ways that people need me and need me to support them as they move through this phase of their lives. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it is, it, it's, there are so many transitions along the way, aren't there? There's the, the early pregnancy stages, there's the later pregnancy stages and the birth. Um, there's then that immediate postpartum phase where actually physically you're not quite on your top game um, and you're getting used to having a newborn in the house. Um, and then there's the phase that follows it where you're kind of rebalancing your family dynamic with your partner or people around you. And the fact that you've now become a mother or a father And actually, what does that mean? And what were your expectations of being a parent? And then, of course, you might have a second or a third. And it changes again. And it changes. And it changes for you individually, for you and your partner, for you and your wider family, and for you and your workplace. Like, most people have a a job as well. And suddenly, everything's changing on that front too. So, yes, I can see there are a lot of stages and transitions you're going through and some people just need a little more coaching would prefer to have someone to talk to and someone to um, just give them a little bit of advice and help them prepare for each of those changes so yeah absolutely I can see how your service would come in on so many scales so you do this one-to-one with people but you also offer online courses don't you yeah so primarily this kind of the deeper sort of work is on a one-to-one basis because that requires getting to know people and really understanding them and you know connecting with them on that more personal level but i offer online courses so i've got an online birth prep course which is just you know, an elevated kind of antenatal education. I go through the mechanics of birth, how birth works, the role the mind plays in our experience of birth, and then what your rights are and your choices and options, which is super important. And lots of people don't realize, you know, half of the things that are available to them. Um, So that's an online course that I offer. And then I've got other, you know, when I do one-off workshops, so I did a one-off workshop last year, which I called Real Self Care. And that was for new mums. And it was going beyond the kind of self-care that people usually advocate for, you know, have a few minutes to yourself, go and have a nice bath, go and have a walk, all of that stuff. And we went a bit deeper in our kind of group and dug into where am I finding my experiences hard? What's the expectation there? How does my mind actually work as I navigate through these experiences? And how can I make my experiences feel a little bit easier? So that was a one-off kind of 90-minute workshop. When I do things like that, then I make it available 
um, on my website and I'll keep doing things like that. So yeah, it's kind of a, a mixture of offerings, if you like. Sometimes it's the one-to-one is needed when you want to get into the deeper level, but sometimes just a, an online course is, is quite handy. And I believe it will be only online for a short period because you're waiting for your third fabric. Yeah, yeah, I am. So I'm about 35 weeks pregnant at this moment in time. Um, and I will take a break from one-to-one coaching for a bit. And so I will just have my online offerings, but I don't know how long a break I'm going to take at this point. It's kind of hard to say. Um, but yeah, those the, the one-to-one sessions will be paused for a little bit. Yeah, are you feeling a little bit of pressure to get back to work? Because obviously now you're self-employed, um, it, it, the pressure mounts to get back into the the workplace as soon as possible. Yeah, it does. I think I think it's hard when you're self-employed and you have your own business. It's like another baby, isn't it? And you you can't help yourself but want to keep giving and keep like building it and helping it grow. So I think that kind of pressure. Like it comes from inside of me and, and the passion and, you know, l- the love that I have for my business and and just being, you know, the creator of it. And when you have so many ideas and things that you want to do, it's kind of hard to resist, isn't it? Staying away for too long. Um, so, yeah, there is an element of pressure, but it's it's different. I think when it's your business, you genuinely have this like love for it, don't you? It doesn't feel quite the same as you know, being pressured by an employer to to get back to that place, which I've been in that position before. Um, it's quite a different experience. I think it's quite interesting, though, because a lot of ladies are returning to the workplace earlier, whether it's financial pressure pushing them back into the workplace, or I do wonder if a lot of ladies have full-on careers these days before they have their children. So they have found something they're passionate about, something they really enjoy. So it sort of comes from within thinking, but I don't want to give this up, actually. Yes, I want to be a mummy and I love it, but I also love what I do. And maybe I'm I'm quite senior by now and and I have responsibilities and I want to get back to it. So uh, yeah, I think it's it's quite an internal wrangle in, in anybody's making that decision of of when to go back yeah and I completely relate to the the latter one of those scenarios because I set up my business when my daughter my second born was only five or six months old but I felt just this pull toward like wanting to create something for myself like have this thing that was mine like that I could kind of ring fence and a place where I could you know, let my passions out and, you know, live out my creativity and be of service in a way that felt really good and really invigorating. And I do think it it helped me in my experience of motherhood because I was, you know, still learning how to let go of some of that kind of controlling nature. And, you know, that I'm by no means finished with that journey. That's something that I still kind of struggle with sometimes. But I was talking to a friend about this recently and it was like setting up that business was like the one place I had control. It was like the one area that I could exert some power in because I just had no power in any other, you know, area of my life or experience as I was grappling with two kids, you know, two years apart. So it was, I really relate to wanting to get back to something that you feel really passionate about and that you love so I don't know what maybe what this time will bring maybe I'll want to get back to it even quicker you know going from two to three and having even less control um I might want to get back to it soon and have that thing for myself but I'm not sure not sure just yet I was giggling along then thinking yeah I often say to people I have absolutely no authority in my house anymore like yeah when I speak, nobody really listens. They do their own thing or they, they outrightly tell me, no, mummy, and walk away from me. And I think, do you know what? Maybe I just go to work to get people to do what I want. Just, you know, <laughs> just once a day. It's quite nice that I have a tiny bit of authority in my workplace. Yeah, that's exactly it. You can be the boss somewhere, just not at home. <laughs> just not at home. Yeah. I know the children are the boss at home. Yeah. Yeah, exactly that. I did have another question a little bit for you um, that somebody had sent in and it was really around birth trauma. Um, 
and they were they were mostly concerned that they haven't actually given birth yet but it was one of their questions was they're already struggling with the idea of birth trauma and it's been I think it's probably come about a little bit because they've seen a little bit more on social media they've heard a few stories and they're panicking um their question was actually do you in your opinion is birth trauma is the number of people going through birth trauma actually getting bigger or are we just more exposed to it because of social media and us being more outspoken and how can this person in particular sort of control their their anxiety around it before they go into their birth Mm. so we are definitely getting better at identifying trauma in in general but especially birth trauma we're getting much better able to identify it when it happens when someone is experiencing it but unfortunately we do know that birth trauma is on the rise as well due primarily to the rates of intervention being on the rise in birth as well so we think that that's going kind of hand in hand at the minute but of course we do hear more about it and we're more exposed to stories of it because of social media i mean we're exposed to so much more of everything aren't we on social media in general um but it is i totally appreciate how anxiety inducing it is for anyone who's not given birth before to be aware of the prevalence of trauma in birth and you know when you're when you are reading about it all the time like that you can't help but have it at the forefront of your mind and you know that's what you're gearing up for and you're expecting to some extent because you know it is so prevalent i think the best thing that you can do is to prepare yourself for birth you know not just taking an antenatal course not just you know writing a birth plan but really digging into that anxiety like you know is there is there a specific scenario in birth that you're particularly anxious about is there a story that is you know really prevalent in your mind that you really you keep coming back to and you feel nervous about that scenario playing out in particular you know, is there a way to explore that a bit deeper and really actively work on your anxiety around that with, you know, more tailored support, you know, using actual therapeutic tools to help reduce anxiety. But educating yourself will be a big part of that, you know, filling in the gaps in your own mind, because if all you're going on is social media and the stories that you see on there, you know, they're, they're not always representative of every experience and every you know birth um so i think it's really important to just prepare yourself as best as possible i I do think the more educated the more things you can read and prepare and like you say not just reading one side of the story but both sides and trying to find that balance and like you say digging into exactly what it is that seems to be triggering for you yeah that that can help prepare you so that you go into that birth not wound up and, and tight, but actually I feel educated, I feel prepared, I know there's a 50-50 on this one. Okay, let's go in there. Um, because I think that's it's something that's becoming, like you say, just more outspoken. So it's becoming more prevalent that people are going into those medical interventions already tense already prepared that something's going to go wrong and they almost need to balance it out and and read more of the stories of positive birth yeah oh definitely and and, you know it's not to say that we don't need to hear these stories of you know birth trauma or you know when birth doesn't quite go to plan they are so important and so valid in their own right but I think like you say we need to balance it out because especially in the media they have uh, they're very much skewed toward the more negative dramatic theatrical versions of birth so we already have those they're more prominent in our mind anyway so if you can get some positive stories in if you can educate yourself fill in the gaps like learn about you know what actually happens during birth not the hollywood version that we've all been exposed to since we were children but what actually happens what are my rights how can i 
how can I prevent myself from being triggered as well? Because like you say, sometimes it can end up being this kind of self-fulfilling prophecy, if you like. You see this thing, it creates anxiety, and then that can have a knock-on impact on someone's birth experience anyway. So knowledge is definitely power in this scenario and support is power as well actually speaking to someone you know if it's that severe if you're feeling that anxious about that happening I think finding a space where you can voice that and get you know support with that would be really super important ahead of going into that experience if this has resonated with anybody and they do want to look you up and have a look at what's available on the online courses or or look at a one-to-one where can they find you? So I am on Instagram. Um, my handle is at I'm Dr. Tuesday. I've got a website as well, I'm Dr. Tuesday.com, where you'll find everything you need to know about who I am, what I do, what I offer, like the support that I can give you. Um, so those are probably the best ways to find me and get in touch. Well, thank you very much for coming on, Dr. Tuesday. It's been absolutely fascinating to chat to you. I feel like I could talk to you all day. Um, but we, we will wrap up and let you get back to your day. Uh, thank you very much. And good luck with birth number three. Thank I you. I hope it all goes beautifully for you. Um, and we will talk again soon. Yes, look forward to it. Thank you very much. Bye.